busy adventure. One summer day, Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird found a colourful storybook. It was packed with pretty pictures of the sea swimming with fish and crabs. And there was another strange animal that Berry had never seen. It's called an octopus, but I've never seen a real one either. Why don't we go to the sea? Berry asked excitedly. But we don't know where the sea is, Berry. I know, let's ask Dr Owl. He knows everything. Do you know how to get to the sea, Dr Owl? You need to build a boat and sail down the stream. The stream will take you to the river and the river flows right into the sea. Berry and Dolly thanked Dr Owl for his advice and got to work right away. The three owl chicks happily helped them build their boat. The two friends jumped in and the stream carried them all the way to the sea. Hooray! We're going to see the sea. The wind blew their boat down the stream and then the river. It wasn't long before the vast blue sea was right in front of them. We're here, yelled Barry. He pulled the boat to the shore and tied it to a palm tree. Come on, Dolly, let's dive to the bottom of the sea. The two friends saw all kinds of incredible creatures under the sea. They spotted a big crab and followed it to the surface. Excuse me, can you tell us where we can find a real octopus? Asked Dolly. Hold on to my pincers and I'll show you the little island where the octopus likes to sunbathe. The crab helped them to the island and swam away. The octopus was much bigger than they'd imagined and it frightened them. Berry and Dolly hid behind a big rock. Then the octopus had a good idea. It picked up some pebbles and started to juggle them with its eight tentacles. The little ladybird and the snail crept out from behind the rock. Come over here, the octopus said. I'll show you the prettiest pebbles on my island. Berry and Dolly quickly made friends with the octopus and they all had so much fun. It's time for us to go, said Dolly. Goodbye, it was very nice to meet you. Bye bye, replied the octopus and gave them both a shiny pebble each. Berry and Dolly got into the boat and tried to paddle away. But it was too hard. Oh dear, Berry, we won't be able to manage. We'll have to get out of the boat. Dolly was really scared. See, Berry, I told you we shouldn't have sailed so far from home. I think you're right, Dolly. But then the stone started to move. Why are you so sad, little snail? The stone asked. This made Berry laugh. It wasn't a stone after all. It was a turtle. My friends, the rainbow fish, are about to begin their long journey. They'll swim up the stream all the way to the source. I'm sure they'd be happy to take you with them. Berry and Dolly said goodbye to the turtle and sat on the back of the captain fish. Then they all set off on their way home. By the time it was getting dark, the fish had reached the clearing where the ladybird's spotty house stood. Berry and Dolly thanked the fish for their help and they swam away. See, Dolly, all's well that ends well the little snail said wisely. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Flutter goes skiing. On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. 
Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed footstraps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry, and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill and then the hill after that until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop, and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up, and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you, Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you, Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski, Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop, and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted, and he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bubbles Tower It was a lovely summer afternoon and Bubble the baby beetle decided to play with his colourful building blocks. I'm going to build a tall tower with my blocks, he thought to himself and carried them to a hill nearby. He tipped the bright blocks out of their box in the shade of a big oak tree. As the tower grew, it was harder and harder for Bubble to reach the top. He had to stand on tiptoe and was just reaching for the top when his hand slipped and the tower tumbled to the ground. Oh no, Bubble complained. Now I have to start all over again.
so the baby beetle started again from the beginning. The tower soon began to grow and was very tall indeed. But oh dear, an acorn from the oak tree knocked the baby beetle's tower down. My lovely tower! My tower's ruined again! It was the silly oak tree's fault, he said out loud. So little Bubbles started again, but this time he moved out from under the old oak tree. He was stacking the blocks on top of each other when his friends Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybug and Stanley the Stag Beetle came walking over. Wow, you've built a beautiful tower, Bubble, they all said. Yes, it's nearly finished. All I have to do is put the red triangle on the very top. But then the wind blew and toppled his tall tower. Bubble got very angry. I don't believe it. I don't want to build towers anymore. I'm going home. His friends ran after him. Bubble, wait! Why don't we rebuild your tower together? No, I don't want to build towers anymore. You can't build a really high tower with this many blocks anyway, grumbled. He went into his house and slammed the door shut. How can we help Bubble? Dolly puzzled. We've got to think of a way to cheer him up somehow. I know what we can do, Stanley said. I've got another set of building blocks at home. I'll go and fetch them so we can build a really high tower together. That's a super idea. I have a box full of building blocks too. And I'll bring mine. We'll build the tallest tower ever. Berry pulled his blocks in a little trailer. Dolly pushed hers in a wheelbarrow and Stanley carried his in a big basket. Look, we brought our building blocks. Why don't we build a big tower together? Dolly asked nicely. We could build it in your house so that the wind won't knock it down again, Berry added. Goodness me, look at all those building blocks. We'll be able to build a very big tower with them, the baby beetle said with a smile. Now it's time to pop the red triangle on the top. You should put it on, Bubble, Stanley suggested. Hooray! It's finished! They all shouted together. Then Berry, Dolly and Stanley said goodnight to Bubble. The baby beetle went to bed very happy that night. He stared at the tower until he fell fast asleep. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Rainbow It was a rainy summer day. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat sadly underneath a giant leaf. Then the sun came out and the sky was blue again. But the shower didn't stop. And soon a colourful rainbow stretched across the sky. It's beautiful, they shouted. Berry thought it would be a good idea to climb up the rainbow and slide down on the other side. But his first try didn't work. I think I'll try from the other side, he said. Trust me, you can't climb a rainbow, Dolly said to the excited snail. But then Berry came up with a new plan. I'll use a ladder. Oh, Berry, I don't think it's a good idea, Dolly said anxiously. Dolly was right. 
And Berry was angry. Dolly tried to distract her friend. Come and play something else. But Berry still didn't give up. Look, Dolly, I'm sure I can jump on top of it from here. But that idea didn't work either. Dolly ran over to Berry. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine, Berry sulked. Berry was very sad and Dolly tried everything to cheer him up. I got you some flowers, she said kindly. But Berry couldn't be comforted. Then the rain dried up and the rainbow disappeared. They walked home hand in hand and Dolly said nice things to the little snail. Chin up, Berry. It's your birthday the day after tomorrow and I'm sure you'll get some super presents. Dolly had a great idea when she got home. I'll make a rainbow slide for Berry's birthday, she said to herself. Then his dream can come true and he can slide down a rainbow. Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly helped her. Balthazar, Dolly and Flutter painted the slide with colourful paint, wrapped it in yellow paper and tied it up with a blue ribbon. The three friends even baked a cake for Berry. When the time came, Balthazar and Flutter took Berry to Dolly's house, where everything was ready for the birthday party. Let's give him his presents, yelled Balthazar. And Dolly gave Berry the chocolate cake. A real rainbow, a rainbow slide. Can I try the slide? Sure you can, Dolly replied. Berry liked the rainbow slide very much. He slid on it again and again. Flutter and Balthazar were so happy they started to dance. You know, Dolly, said Berry, it really is a nice present. Thank you. Lots of friends joined in the birthday celebrations. There was Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle, Zephyr the Dragonfly and even Stanley the Stag Beetle came. The little snail let everybody try his new slide. Berry, Dolly and their friends played on the slide until it got dark. Berry went to bed very happy that day. What a wonderful birthday I've had, he sighed with a smile. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Friends. It was a super sunny day and Dolly the ladybird sat staring out of the window. I'm going to eat breakfast she thought, and then I'll go for a walk in the meadow. She decided to take her wheelbarrow with her. I wonder if I'll find something interesting to take home in my wheelbarrow, she thought to herself. Goodness me, said Dolly. What a lovely red cherry. That's just perfect for my lunch. She tried to lift the cherry into her wheelbarrow, but it was far too heavy. Too heavy for one little ladybird. Just then, Berry the snail appeared. Why the sad face, ladybird? asked Berry. I can't lift this cherry into my wheelbarrow, Dolly replied. Don't cry, I'll help you, Berry said with a smile. And the two of them picked the cherry up with no trouble at all. Dolly set straight off home with the juicy cherry. Now it was Berry who looked sad. 
Don't you want to share the cherry with me? The snail said and stamped his little foot. I did help you. But I found it first, Dolly snapped. You're not having any. It's mine. Berry was very upset. The two of them started to fight over the cherry. It's mine! It's mine! shouted Dolly. That's not fair! Berry shouted back. They pushed and pulled the cherry until it split in two. Berry and Dolly plopped to the ground. They were very surprised when a green grub crawled out of the cherry. What have you done to my cherry? he grumbled. That cherry was my home! Oh, don't look so upset, the grub said. I know where we can find plenty more. You can eat cherries while I find a new home for myself. Dolly helped the grub into her wheelbarrow and they all set off to look for the cherry tree. When they arrived, they found the ground around the cherry tree was covered in ripe red fruit. Berry and Dolly jumped for joy. The grub fell fast asleep while Berry and Dolly munched away on fresh cherries and the time soon flew by. It was getting late, so they decided to go home, but this time with two cherries. One for Dolly and one for Berry. The sun was setting by the time they reached Berry's house. They took his cherry out of the wheelbarrow and said goodbye. Berry went inside and waved to Dolly from the window. Berry soon fell fast asleep after such an exciting day. The little snail dreamt about playing in cherries with Dolly and eating until their tummies were full. Then Dolly got back home and went straight to bed. From that day on, Berry and Dolly were the best of friends. Alfonso's Fiddle One autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But, oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. Alfonso! Alfonso, come out! I'm sure we can help you! Berry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody. His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know! Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle! Yes, let's make a new fiddle! Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us! We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, 
Uh, don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed, Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the stag beetle got a double bass and Eddie the potato beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums, while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it. Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. The Kite Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly. Dolly explained, but the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry, help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet, but he couldn't pull her back, so now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair.
Oh dear, the wind's blowing us right into the forest. The kite got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Blueberries. One sunny autumn day, Berry and Dolly went into the forest to pick blueberries. Their friends Flutter the Butterfly and Eddie the Potato Beetle went with them. I'm going to pick the most blueberries, Eddie announced. Look, this bush is full of ripe blueberries, the little snail said. I'm going to pick them all. But Eddie jumped in front of Berry and quickly picked the biggest berries. This bush is full of berries too, Dolly told the others. But the little potato beetle was faster again. By the time Dolly got to the bush, he'd already picked the best of the berries. Eddie, that's not fair. Don't pick all the berries, the little ladybird complained. Then the friends came to a stream. Let's build a bridge over the stream. I know exactly how. Let's all go and bring that big log here. They all had to work hard to pull the heavy log over the stream. The little friends made a super bridge together. It's done, Flutter sighed. Look, there's another blueberry bush with lots of berries on it. That was Eddie's cue. I'm going to get there first. Those blueberries are all mine, he shouted triumphantly. But he pushed past Flutter so hard that she slipped and fell into the stream. Help! Don't worry, Flutter. Hold on to me, Dolly shouted and stretched her hand out to the floundering butterfly. But the water flowed too fast and Flutter couldn't reach Dolly. Berry picked up a long stick. Grab the stick, Flutter, he shouted. But this didn't work either, because the river started to carry the little butterfly away. Eddie, help! We've got to pull poor Flutter out of the water, Dolly yelled. And they pulled the soggy butterfly out of the stream. Oh my, I'm so cold. I'm very, very cold. And my little wings are soaked through. Here, take my jumper. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry, Flutter. That's very nice of you. But you'll catch a cold too without your jumper. We should collect a large pile of leaves and wrap Flutter up in them. Berry, Dolly and Eddie gathered a big bunch of burdock leaves and covered the shivering butterfly with them. I'm still very cold and my wings don't work. Look, they're all wet and ruined. Flutter started to sob. The sun took pity on the weeping butterfly and came down close to warm her wings. Flutter's wings were soon beautifully dry and as good as new. Hooray! I'm all dry and warm at last. Thank you, sun, Flutter said with a smile. Ah. Uh. 
I'm so sorry, Flutter, Eddie said. I promise I won't pick all the blueberries next time. I want you to have all the ones that I've picked. Thank you, Eddie. Why don't we share them instead? Let's hurry home and bake a blueberry pie. The friends all walked back to Flutter's house and got to work straight away. They picked all the leaves off and gave the blueberries a good wash. Spoons stirred and pans clattered until the kitchen was filled with the sweet smell of delicious blueberry pie. The yummy dessert was soon ready. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Bubble the baby beetle came along to join the feast. The forest friends all sat around the table and chatted late into the night. The Puppet Show One sunny summer morning, Berry knocked hard on Dolly's door. It's the Puppet Show today. Let's go and tell Flutter and Eddie too. Berry and Dolly's first stop was at the pretty butterfly's house. Wake up, Flutter. The fleas are going to give a puppet show. It's Snow White. The little friends stopped in front of the potato beetle's house. Eddie, are you coming to see the puppet show? But Eddie didn't open his door. Hurry up, Eddie, we're going to be late, Berry shouted, but there was still no answer. Flutter gently turned the handle and popped her head inside. Are you still in your pyjamas, Eddie? Berry grumbled. Hurry up and get dressed. I'm not going. My tummy's covered in nasty bites. It really itches, Eddie sobbed. Let me have a look, Dolly told him. They're not bites. You've got chicken pox, the ladybird girl told her sickly friend. There's no need to be scared. I've had them already and I had thousands of spots. I'll go and get Dr Owl, Dolly announced. He'll know what to do. Dr Owl soon arrived and took a good look at Eddie. Hmm, it's definitely chicken pox. Chicken pox is contagious, Eddie. I'm afraid you won't be able to go to the puppet show. Contagious? Does that mean Berry, Dolly and Flutter are going to catch my chicken pox? No, don't worry. You can only catch chicken pox once and they all had it last year. You mustn't scratch your spots. There'll be another puppet show, Berry reassured him. Don't be sad. You'll get better soon, Dolly smiled. Berry, Dolly and Flutter said goodbye to the little potato beetle and hurried off to see the puppet show. The puppet show was already set up in the meadow and the puppeteers were five fleas. The curtains soon opened and the puppet show began. They all watched the rest of the puppet show and clapped loudly at the end. The flea puppeteers came out from behind the tent and took a bow. It's such a shame that Eddie couldn't come with us, Dolly said with a sad smile. I'm sure he'd have really liked it. Why don't we put a puppet show on for him? Dolly suddenly suggested. That's a super idea, Dolly, Flutter said. And the three friends were soon all hard at work. Flutter drew dwarves, Dolly drew Snow White and the Prince, and Berry drew the Wicked Queen. Then they cut their drawings out and glued them onto sticks. When they were ready, they all crept under Eddie's window and tapped on the glass. The little potato beetle opened the window and looked out. Let the puppet show begin, Berry announced, and the three friends started the show.
thank you, he said. You're the best friends a beetle could have. Dr Owl came back ten days later and all Eddie's spots had gone. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Pebbles. One sunny summer afternoon, Dolly decided to cook a strawberry cake. She asked Stanley the stag beetle and Balthazar the bee to go and collect wild strawberries in the forest. The two boys set off. Balthazar soon spotted a pebble in the middle of the path and he started to kick it along. But Stanley also liked the look of the pebble and he tackled it off Balthazar. That's not fair, Stanley. I found it. I want to kick it down the path. It's my pebble now. Find another pebble to kick. But I found it, so it's mine, Balthazar moaned. There are loads of pebbles. Find another one, Stanley said, trying to close the argument. But Balthazar wouldn't leave it at that. He pushed Stanley out of the way so that he could kick the pebble. The two of them continued to push and shove until they both tumbled down the hill into the babbling brook. Alfonso the cricket came out of his house to see what all the noise was about. What's going on? he asked. It's all Stanley's fault. He took my pebble. It wasn't your pebble. I was just a better kicker. That's enough of that, Alfonso interrupted. Come inside, get dry, and then tell me all about what started this silly argument. The two boys muttered to themselves as they followed the cricket into his little house. They hung their wet clothes out in the hot sun and sat wrapped in towels while they waited for them to dry. Alfonso gave them both a glass of lemonade and a biscuit. The sun's warm rays soon dried the clothes. Stanley and Balthazar munched sulkily on their biscuits. They told Alfonso all about what had happened and how they had rolled down the hill into the brook. I've got a whole collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Can we have a look? Balthazar enthused. Of course, Alfonso said with a proud smile, and he placed a large box on the table. Where did you find all these lovely pebbles? Stanley asked. Down by the brook. You can collect some too if you like. They filled their baskets with pebbles. They sat sorting them and organising them until it started to get dark. The little stag beetle and the bee boy said goodbye to their cricket friend and started to walk back up the hill. They soon came to Dolly's house. The little ladybird girl shouted angrily out of the window. Where are the strawberries? Oh dear. The strawberries? We forgot the strawberries. Dolly, look at the lovely pebbles we collected with Alfonso. What am I supposed to do with them? Make pebble cakes? I asked for strawberries. But we forgot, Stanley admitted, and he told her the whole long story. Well, I see. Let me have a look at those pebbles. If you didn't bring any strawberries... We should paint something on them. This one looks just like a little house. And this one, I might paint a smiley face on it. That's a super idea. We can invite the others and spend all day painting pebbles. Great. The next morning, Berry the little snail boy arrived at Dolly's house with Flutter the butterfly, Zephyr the dragonfly, Leapy the grasshopper, Eddie the potato beetle and Bubble the baby beetle. Where is Stanley and Balthazar? Berry asked with a disappointed sigh. Here we are, the stag beetle and the bee boy announced, and they proudly presented Dolly with a big basket of strawberries. Oh, thank you, the little ladybird girl said, and she mixed the cake while the others got to work painting the pebbles. When they had finished, they invited Alfonso to come and see their exhibition. They all look really good. I'll bring my pebbles tomorrow and we can paint them too, the cricket told his friends. When the strawberry cake was ready, they all sat around the table and ate every last crumb. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Easter eggs. 
Easter had arrived at last. Flutter the butterfly girl, Rosita the rose beetle, Leapy the grasshopper girl and Zephyr the dragonfly all gathered together at Dolly's house to paint eggs for Easter. How many eggs do we have to paint? Rosita asked. Now let's see, Berry is certain to come and visit tomorrow, but so is Balthazar, Stanley, Eddie, Bubble, Alfonso and Sam Snail. That means we need to paint seven eggs each. We better get started. Oh, they look so pretty. I'm sure that the boys will love them, Flutter told the others. It's time to go home. I've got to get up early tomorrow to make pancakes for the boys, Flutter said. I'm going to bake scones, Rosita said. And I'm going to make an apple strudel, Dolly added. All the girls got up bright and early the next morning. Flutter hurried into the kitchen, put on her apron and mixed up a big batch of pancake batter. Rosita popped her apron on and started to knead her scone dough. Dolly rolled her pastry out and Zephyr made a sponge roll. Leapy woke up feeling quite excited. Boys never get up early, I've still got plenty of time to bake an apple pie. And she put a big basket of apples on the table. Oh dear. The basket of apples tipped over and knocked her pretty painted Easter eggs onto the floor. They were all <laughs> ruined. Oh, my eggs! Now what am I going to do? What will I give to my visitors? The little grasshopper girl sobbed as she ran to Dolly's house. Dolly, I've smashed all seven of my eggs! Help me! I haven't got time, Leapy. I'm busy baking. But I've still got two unpainted eggs. If you paint them quickly, they'll be dry by the time the boys come. Rosita! All oh, my eggs got smashed! Can you help? I'm too busy baking, but you can have these three white eggs. You've still got time to paint them if you hurry. Flutter! Help! I've got to paint my eggs all over again. The first lot got broken. All of them? I am sorry, but I can't help now. My pancakes will burn. You can have these two unpainted eggs I've got left over. Something terrible has happened, Zephyr. I've broken all the eggs I painted yesterday. Please help me because I haven't got time to paint another seven eggs. Leapy complained to her dragonfly friend. I know who can help you. Come with me. The two friends ran through the forest all the way to a cave. The spider stumbled sleepily from his home. Oh, can you help us, spider? Zephyr asked. Leapy's eggs all got broken. And now she has to paint new ones and there's not much time left. The boys will be coming to visit her soon. If I have to, the spider grumbled. Thank you, you're very kind. Leapy got out all her paints and brushes and the two of them started to paint the eggs. The spider could paint three eggs at once. We're ready, Leapy said with a happy laugh. And then she thanked the spider for his help and she arranged the pretty eggs in a dish. There soon came a knock at Leapy's front door. She opened the door and was greeted by all seven boys at once. Happy Easter, Leapy! They had all come to see Leapy, who offered them a dish and they all chose a pretty Easter egg. I haven't got any cakes to offer you, I'm afraid, Leapy said in a whisper, and then she told them all about what had happened. Don't worry about that, the boys laughed. We ate strudel at Dolly's house, scones at Rosita's house, pancakes at Flutter's house, and sponge roll at Zephyr's house. Our tummies are full. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Missing Nuts Hello, Berry. Hurry up. Let's go and see Reggie Squirrel. We really should say goodbye to him before he hibernates for winter, Dolly the Ladybird said. Berry put on his hat, scarf and gloves and the two friends made their way to Reggie Squirrel's home. 
their friend the squirrel was sitting on a branch in front of his home. We wanted to say goodbye before you snuggle up to sleep through the chilly winter. Why don't you come up for a glass of juice and a quick nut snack? Reggie suggested. Look at all the yummy food I've gathered for winter. My pantry's full. But the pantry was empty. Oh my, where have all my hazelnuts and walnuts gone? Where are my delicious pine cones, acorns and raisins? I think this might be where the nuts rolled out, Berry said, pointing to a little hole in the corner of the pantry. Someone's been chewing the tree trunk, Dolly said in surprise. And I think I know who it was, the little snail added. Don't worry, Reggie. We'll catch the troublemakers and find your nuts. And don't forget the pine cones and acorns too, the squirrel added. The two friends headed towards the big meadow. They heard loud laughter as they got closer. I knew it was them. They're always getting into some sort of trouble, Dolly whispered to Berry. I'm sure they're doing something naughty right now, Berry added. Someone chewed a hole in Reggie Squirrel's tree trunk right outside his pantry. And now all of his nuts are missing. It was you lot, wasn't it? But we didn't mean any harm. We were just chewing the bark like we always do. And we didn't know that his pantry was on the other side, the smallest bark beetle explained. What can we do to help? Come with us and we'll find the nuts that rolled away. We haven't got that much time. It could start to snow at any minute. We'll never be able to find his food in the snow, so hurry. They all took a close look at the tree trunk. The nuts all rolled out here and then they fell to the ground and carried on rolling down the hill, Reggie explained. The gang of friends found Reggie's goodies in a pile at the bottom of the hill. Hooray! Reggie shouted with delight. Would you please bring all the food back to my home while I patch the hole up in my pantry? Reggie told the bark beetles. They carefully placed the hazelnuts, walnuts and acorns back in his pantry. Berry and Dolly gave them a hand. They worked as fast as they could, but it got dark very quickly and they still had a huge stack left at the bottom of the hill. We'll never finish in time, one of the bark beetles sighed. We could really use some extra help, another added. Berry the snail suddenly sprang to his feet and left in a hurry without saying a word. He was soon back and had a trumpet in his hand. He blew it so loudly that everybody could hear it. Soon all the friends in the forest gathered. Dolly climbed up on a big boulder and told them all what had happened to Reggie Squirrel's winter food supply. All the nuts rolled out of the hole. We've got to take the food back to Reggie's home. If you all help, it can be done before dark. Ready, set, go, Berry said, and he lifted a nut from the pile. He gave it to Dolly. She handed it to one of the bark beetles. The bark beetle gave it to the bee. The bee handed it to the dragonfly, and so it moved back up the hill to the squirrel's pantry. By the time the moon appeared in the sky, all the hazelnuts, acorns, walnuts and chestnuts were safely stowed away in Reggie Squirrel's winter home. Reggie happily put the last nut back in his packed pantry. Thank you. I'm so glad I've got so many good friends. It's time for me to tuck myself up in bed before it starts snowing. See you again in spring. The grateful squirrel yawned. dream. It was a stormy night and Berry the little snail was getting ready to go to sleep. He brushed his teeth and jumped into bed. He soon heard a strange noise outside. I suppose it's just the wind. And then he heard the noise again. What could that be? He popped his slippers on and opened the door but couldn't see a soul. I must be imagining things, he said, and slipped back into bed. But then someone knocked again. Who is that? Berry grumbled. He threw the door open and stared outside. Grub, come inside. You're so tiny that I didn't see you. What's wrong? 
I had a bad dream. Can I stay with you for the night? The grub said. Of course you can stay. Berry set to work folding a cardboard box into a bed for the grub. There you go. You can sleep here. And what can I use for a blanket? My hat should do the trick. It's just like a sleeping bag. That's good, Grub. Now get some sleep. I'm very tired. Berry was just dropping off to sleep when the green Grub spoke. Can I have the light on, Berry? I'm scared in the dark. The moon's so bright in the sky tonight. There's nothing to be afraid of. Now try and get some sleep. But it's dark, the grub went on. It's not dark. It is dark. Oh, all right. I'll open the curtains and you'll be able to see the moon. The stars are twinkling too. Now let's sleep, Berry complained. The little snail pulled his blanket up to his nose and he was soon fast asleep. But the green grub woke him up again. I'm thirsty. <clears throat> then have a drink, grub, Berry barked. I can't reach. Please help me, Berry. I only want a drop of water. Well, And Berry would have slept well if the green grub hadn't woken him up again. I'm hungry now. It's too late to eat. We'll have breakfast in the morning. But I'm hungry. I've had no supper because of the storm. The grub complained. Thank you. I won't disturb you again. The green grub promised. But he didn't keep his promise. Berry, I can't get to sleep. I'm scared. He said and woke the little snail up again. What are you scared of? Berry asked with an exhausted yawn. I don't know. Please tell me a story that always sends me off to sleep. All right, I will. I'll never be able to get to sleep now anyway. Berry started to tell the tiny grub a story. He told him about the day the kite flew away, how they found the mushroom's cap, how Dr. Owl cured his earache, and what the centipede got for Christmas. But the grub hardly heard any of it, because he was soon sound asleep. Berry could at last get to bed. By the time they woke, the storm had passed and the sun was shining. Can you see that picture by my bed? Sometimes I have bad dreams too, and when I do, I think of that fairy. She helps chase all the nasty thoughts and bad dreams away. I'll draw you a picture of something you really like and you can stick it over your bed. Then if you feel sad, you can look at it and you'll soon feel better and the bad dream will float away. The sun. Draw me a picture of the sun. I really like him. He's always smiling. It's really nice. Thank you, said the grub. Stick it on your wall over your bed, Berry said. The grub took the picture with a smile and walked happily home. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Harry Hedgehog's birthday. One summer morning, Berry the snail, Dolly the ladybird and their forest friends were playing in the meadow. They were taking turns on the leaf swing. It must be so much fun to play on that swing. And it's a shame I'm too heavy for it, Harry Hedgehog sighed. His friends didn't know what to say. It's Harry Hedgehog's 10th birthday next week, the ladybird said. He'll be 10 years old, the little snail nodded. What do you think he'd like for his birthday? I know, Balthazar exclaimed and jumped to his feet. A swing! That's a super idea. Let's make a big swing for Harry, Dolly said enthusiastically. The little friends got to work immediately. They brought a saw, a hammer, nails and screws and searched for some strong branches. They tied the swing to thick wooden poles with very strong string. When the swing was ready, they all went to Balthazar's house to bake a cake. 
They cracked eggs and stirred the butter. The mixer whirred away and wooden spoons clattered in bowls. The little bee's kitchen was soon filled with delicious smells. They decorated the cake all over with cherries, raisins and walnuts. Let's put candles on it, Flutter said. Yes, ten candles, Dolly nodded. Let's write a letter to Harry, Berry said. Dear Harry, please come to Balthazar's house at lunchtime. We'll all see you there. Can you take it to Harry, please? Berry asked. But don't say a word about the cake and the swing, Dolly shouted after him. Balthazar and Stanley put the cake on a round table and carried it out of the house. The little ants were playing hide and seek and suddenly the smallest ant ran right into the table. <coughs> you tip the table over! The cake's ruined! Balthazar moaned. The cake? What are we going to do now? Dolly sobbed. Harry Hedgehog will be here any minute and he won't have a cake. The little ants felt very sorry for what they'd done, but one of them had an idea. Let's gather lots of fruit and berries and build a big pile. It'll be almost like a cake, won't it? That's a good idea, Stanley said. I know Harry loves fruit. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Stanley and the little ants began to gather fruit in the forest. Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly and Rosita the rose beetle helped them too. They soon had a very big pile indeed. Stanley stuck ten candles on top of the fruit, just seconds before Bubble arrived with Harry Hedgehog. Happy birthday, Harry! They all shouted. Wow, look at all that delicious fruit. My favourite. Thank you very much, the hedgehog exclaimed. We've got a surprise for you, Dolly said, and they led Harry to the swing. Harry was very surprised. What a big swing. Can I use it? He asked cheerfully. Yes, we built it for you. Hooray! Now I can swing too. Thank you so much. Then they stood around the fruit pile and began to eat. They ate and ate until nearly all the fruit was gone. They stuck the leftover apples and pears on Harry's spikes and he took them home to his mossy house. Harry went to bed with a happy smile and looked forward to tomorrow when he'd swing with his friends again. Harry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Spring Sports Day. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting by the lake throwing pebbles into the water. Berry hit a floating log a couple of times and his friends clapped. Come down to the meadow now. The spring sports day is about to start, Stanley told them all. Their forest friends had already gathered in the meadow. The little beetles all put their running shorts on and stood in line. They all ran as fast as they could. They had to run three times around the meadow. It's not fair! Eddie cheated! He cut the corner! Leapy the grasshopper shouted. There's to be no cheating! Let's start the competition again, but no cheating! Stanley came first, Leapy came second and Balthazar came third. Berry finished last. Balthazar and Eddie started whispering. He's as slow as a snail. Don't make fun of him. It's not nice, Dolly said angrily. Now it's time for the high jump. The one who can pick the highest apple is the winner, Alfonso said. The friends took a run and tried to jump as high as possible. 
Leapy got the highest apple, Flutter got the second one, and Eddie the Potato Beetle grabbed the third apple. No matter how hard Berry tried, he couldn't even reach the lowest apple. I can't do it. I just can't do it, he sulked. Come on, Berry. You'll be better at the next race. Don't be sad, Rosita said. But Berry was too nervous to join the rolling race because he was frightened he'd crack his shell. The others all lined up and rolled from one end of the meadow to the other. Dolly was the fastest and she won. Now let's start flying, Alfonso said. The fastest to fly to the top of this tree and get a pine cone from there is the winner. The beetles started immediately. Flutter, Balthazar, Dolly and Zephyr all joined the race. Flutter was the fastest and got to the top of the tree first. I can't fly either, Berry snivelled. Don't be so angry, Berry. It's time for the skipping competition now. The fastest skipper wins. The four contestants started skipping. But suddenly, Berry got tangled in the rope and hurt himself. The others were worried and ran over to him. I'm not doing any more silly races. I can't do anything. I'm going home. We have to think of something. We have to cheer Berry up, Dolly said. You're right. What's he really good at? Rosita asked. I know, Flutter shouted. Throwing! That's a super idea, Balthazar agreed. Berry was the only one who could hit the log in the lake. They made five piles. The first one was made out of apples, the second of horse chestnuts, the third of pine cones, the fourth out of hazelnuts, and the fifth one out of pears. Dolly convinced Berry to come back to the meadow. It's time for the throwing competition. Do you want to join in? Rosita asked. Hooray! Throwing! Of course I'm in! Everybody had a go, but Berry was the best. He was the only one who managed to knock over all five piles. You see, Berry, I'm the best runner. Leapy's the best high jumper. Flutter's the best at flying. Dolly at rolling. Rosita can skip the fastest. And you're the best thrower. Everybody's good at something, Stanley explained. Berry got a beautiful, shiny chestnut engraved by Alfonso, which said, Throwing first place. Sunflowers. Berry and Dolly planted sunflower seeds in the spring and watered the seeds until little shoots soon appeared. The shoots grew into little plants that grew into big plants. Then buds appeared that opened into lovely yellow flowers in the summer. Hooray! The friends cheered when they saw the lovely flowers. Berry noticed that the flowers pointed one way in the morning and another in the afternoon. Look, Dolly, they're turning their heads. That's because they always turn to face the sun. That's why they're called sunflowers. When the sun went down, the sunflowers hung their heads and went to sleep. All the forest friends were woken the next morning by shouts of panic. Oh dear, what's happened? Our lovely sunflowers! Dolly cried. Who could have done such a terrible thing? Berry wept. Someone has chewed through the stems of our sunflowers. Flutter washed their wounds with fresh dew and Dolly bandaged them all with soft blades of grass. The sunflowers slowly started to smile again. The friends all gathered in Balthazar's house to decide what to do next. What are we going to do? Berry sobbed. Someone needs to stand guard at night. I'll go first, said Dolly bravely. The little ladybird hid quietly behind the bush and kept a close eye on the sunflowers. She didn't have to wait for very long. 
a hamster soon appeared and started to chew at the stems of the sunflowers. Dolly jumped out from her hiding place and shouted, Shoo! This surprised the hamster and he ran away. He didn't come back again that night. Flutter guarded the sunflowers the next night, and then Balthazar, and then Stanley. Soon it was Berry's turn. The little snail hid quietly behind the bush and waited. He waited and waited until he eventually fell asleep. He wasn't even woken by the sound of the hamster chewing at the sunflower stems. Oh dear, I must have fallen asleep. I didn't guard the sunflowers, Berry sobbed when he saw the sadly sagging sunflowers the following morning. Berry fell asleep. He slept while the hamster chewed the stems again. Why do you all look so sad? asked Dr Owl. Dolly told him what had happened to the sunflowers. I think you should talk to the hamster. Ask him not to hurt the sunflowers, Dr Owl suggested. There he is. He's asleep in the bush, Berry whispered to the others. The noise woke the sleeping hamster. The hamster looked scared of the friends and the friends felt frightened of the hamster. There's no need to be scared of us. We just wanted to ask you not to chew our sunflowers. But then what will I eat? The hamster told them. We'll bring you plenty of apples and carrots to nibble on. Where do you live? The little snail asked. I haven't got a house of my own, the hamster said sadly. You haven't got a house? Balthazar repeated in surprise. Then we'll build you one. Dolly brought apples, Berry brought seeds, Flutter brought raisins, Balthazar brought dandelion leaves and Stanley brought carrots. My new house is really super, the hamster said with a cheery smile. And thank you so much for all the yummy food. The hamster never chewed the sunflower stems again. And they smiled happily at Berry and Dolly and all their friends for the rest of the summer. The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you, Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need teams to play a proper game, Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle, and the match began. That's it, run, Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come on, reds! Come on, blues! The crowd cheered. That's not fair, Frank. 
you can't touch the ball with your hand, the bee boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up. Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Barry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ouch, my arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr. Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes, I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr. Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster, and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again, Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules, Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr. Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Gingerbread. December had arrived and the forest was covered in a thick quilt of snow. Berry and Dolly were sitting chatting in the ladybird's dotty house. Let's bake some gingerbread biscuits, Dolly suggested with a bright smile. Berry and Dolly got to work in the kitchen. They bustled around in a cloud of spices and flour and rolled the biscuit dough out flat on the table. Dolly got all the gingerbread cutters out of the drawer. They cut lots of different shapes out and popped the biscuits in the oven to bake. When the biscuits were cooked to a crunchy crisp, Dolly took them out of the oven and put them in a pretty bowl. Then she carefully placed the bowl outside in the snow. These hot biscuits will soon cool down in the winter chill, she told Berry. Just then a magpie flew over the house. He could smell the delicious gingerbread biscuits and he swooped down and carried the lot off in his big beak. When Dolly came out later, the bowl and biscuits had completely disappeared. Oh dear, someone's taken my yummy biscuits, she shrieked. But who could have taken the bowl? Berry asked. Berry and Dolly decided to go and search in the forest. The first friend they ran into was Iris the Ice Beetle. Oh, Iris, someone has taken my yellow bowl full of fresh gingerbread biscuits. You didn't see who it was, did you? Dolly asked. Yes, I did. It was the magpie. He flew off in that direction. They kept walking until they met the grub. Hello, grub. The magpie took my yellow bowl filled with gingerbread biscuits. Did you see which way he flew? The grub pointed. Not long after, Berry and Dolly caught sight of Bubble and Eddie, who were building a snowman. Have you seen the magpie? He took my yellow bowl and all our gingerbread, Dolly complained. Yes, we saw him. He flew towards the stream, 
the potato beetle replied. Look, Dolly, fresh biscuit crumbs. The magpie must have flown this way, Berry suddenly shouted. If we follow the trail, it should take us to the magpie's nest, Dolly proposed. The pair of them followed the trail of crumbs and it took them all the way to the magpie's nest and to the sweet smell of gingerbread. Berry and Dolly climbed up the tree and knocked on the magpie's door. Did you take my yellow bowl filled with fresh gingerbread? Dolly asked as soon as the magpie opened the door. Yes, it was me. I was very hungry. I saw the bowl sitting there, so I took it. But I can give it back to you. It's not nice to take what belongs to somebody else, Dolly said, and marched back to her house in a grumpy mood. Berry did his best to keep up with the little ladybird. Don't be angry, Dolly. I know that the magpie took your bowl, but he gave it back, and I'm certain that he'll apologise. The little snail said. Berry and Dolly invited their friends over that afternoon. Flutter the butterfly, Balthazar the bee and Stanley the stag beetle all came around for tea. They all sat at the table and began to eat. It wasn't long after that they heard a soft knock on the front door. Dolly opened the door. The magpie was standing outside and looking very ashamed of himself. I brought you some rosehip cordial. I made it myself. Please take it as a gift to say how sorry I am for pinching your gingerbread, the magpie said. Why don't you come in and join us for a bite to eat, magpie? There's plenty of room for you at our table. This made the magpie very happy. The friends sat around the table munching on delicious gingerbread biscuits and sipping fresh rosehip cordial. They chatted and laughed late into the night. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Little Bumblebee Early one morning, Berry, Dolly and Balthazar went out to play in the meadow. They wanted to try out the new parachute the little bee had made. But a little bumblebee was picking lilac flowers and singing a happy song. The winter's gone and it's the spring. Lilac is my favourite thing. Balthazar was the first to greet her. Hello, little bumblebee. My name's Balthazar. This is Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird. Who are you? My name's Betty. I was flying home and I decided to stop and pick lilac flowers in the meadow. We're on our way to try this new parachute. Do you want to come with us? Balthazar asked. I'd love to. Balthazar and Betty were the first to jump, and then the other friends tried the colourful parachute. They played until it got dark. Will you play with us again tomorrow? Balthazar asked excitedly. I can't. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. My home is far away from here, and I still have a long way to go. So Berry, Dolly and Balthazar said goodbye to Betty. Balthazar looked very upset, so Dolly asked him, What's wrong? <laughs> Balthazar's got a girlfriend, Berry laughed. Don't make fun of him, Berry, Dolly said angrily. You know what, Balthazar? Ask Betty to stay here. We can build her a house in the woods. That's a super idea. I'll go to the meadow tomorrow morning and ask her to stay. Balthazar, Dolly and Berry got up very early the next day. They hurried to the meadow to talk to Betty. But the friends were too late. The little bumblebee had already left. The only thing they found was a farewell note she'd left for them pinned to a tree. Balthazar sat down on the grass and started to cry. Berry didn't laugh at him this time. Let's go after her, the little snail said. I'm sure we can catch her up. Berry, you're such a slow snail. We'll never catch up with Betty if you don't hurry up. Berry was going to say something back to Balthazar when a hedgehog stepped out of the bushes. Perhaps I can help. No, I'm not too fast, but I'm sure I'm much faster than you three. The friends liked the idea. 
They built a little cart out of a horse chestnut shell and tied it to the hedgehog's spikes. The hedgehog cart was ready to roll. Let's rest a little while, Dolly suggested when it got dark. We'll carry on tomorrow morning. Balthazar started to cry again. We'll never find her. I can smell something sweet. It's lilac blossom. Lilac? Dolly wondered. But there aren't any lilac bushes around here. Let's look around. Would you like to come back and live with us? We could build you a little bumblebee house in a tree. You wouldn't have to fly back to your faraway home. We'd be so happy if you lived with us. That's a super idea. We'd all be very happy. Berry and Dolly nodded. Thank you. I'd love to come and live with you. Betty replied. She was happy. You came all this way to find me. That's so nice of you. They all jumped into the hedgehog cart and trundled back to the meadow. They started to build the house the very next morning. They built Betty a pretty tree house near the lilac field. When the bumblebee's house was ready, they had a big party. All the forest friends were invited. They danced and ate late into the night and made their new neighbour very welcome indeed. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Earache. It was a sunny autumn afternoon and Dolly decided to go and see her friend Berry. I'm going down to the stream to collect pebbles. Do you want to come? But Berry didn't feel like going out to play. I don't know, Dolly. I'm very cold and I've got a headache and my ears really hurt. Oh, Berry, your ears are all red, Dolly said. And you've got a temperature. I'll fly and fetch Dr Owl. The ladybird flew straight to Dr Owl's tree. Dr Owl, you need to come quickly. Berry feels very poorly. Dr. Owl quickly packed his doctor's bag, put on his white coat and hurried to see the sickly snail. Hello there, Berry. Let me have a look at you. I need to listen to your chest. So Berry took off his pyjama top and breathed in like the doctor said. Open wide. I need to look at your throat now. I don't want to, Berry snapped. But I have to see if it's red or not, Dr. Owl explained, and shone a torch down the little snail's throat. And now I'll take a peek inside your ear. This was really too much for Berry. He started to cry and clamped his hands over his ears. Don't be silly, Berry. It won't hurt a bit. And Dolly held Berry's hand to make him feel better. She was right. It didn't hurt a bit. Well, Berry, Dr. Owl explained, you've bad earache. You've gone and caught a nasty cold. You need to have a spoonful of this medicine every day. Drink lots of sweet tea and put bags of warm wheat on your ears. Berry's friends came to help him right away. Balthazar brought honey, Flutter brought chamomile flowers, and Stanley brought rose hips, and they made tea for the patient. Dolly warmed the wheat in a pan and poured it into little cloth bags. Hold these on your ears until they cool down. Berry put the bags on and didn't take them off until they cooled down. Next morning, Dolly found a handful of shiny pebbles on Berry's table. Wow, Berry, lovely pebbles. Who gave you these? I found them down by the stream. Berry said proudly. You went down to the stream? Dolly asked angrily. That was very silly, Berry. You're still not better. You'll get sick again. And Dolly was right. Berry was soon back in bed with a temperature. His little friends came to visit him every day. They read him stories and put on puppet shows. But just as Berry started to get better, 
Dolly started feeling worse. Now she'd got earache, and this time, Berry took care of Dolly. He made her tea and warmed the wheat bags for her ears. Now it was time for Dr Owl to pay Dolly a visit. Gracious me, it seems we have a new patient. I think you must have caught it from Berry. He told Dolly exactly what to do. Then he took another quick look at Berry. You look well enough, but I'll examine you just in case. Everything's fine. You've made a full recovery, little snail. Another few days passed. Dolly did as she was told and took her medicine. She drank plenty of tea and stayed in bed, and she soon felt much better. Dr Owl came to see her one last time and told her she was fine. So now we can go down to the stream together and collect pebbles. Berry was very excited. Hooray, let's all go down to the stream. Dr Owl's three chicks tweeted. Remember to dress up nice and warm. It's cold outside. But there was no need to warn Dolly and Berry. They both wore a scarf, a hat and warm boots. They stayed and played until it got dark and collected a whole bucket full of shiny pebbles. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Blueberries. One sunny autumn day, Berry and Dolly went into the forest to pick blueberries. Their friends Flutter the Butterfly and Eddie the Potato Beetle went with them. I'm going to pick the most blueberries, Eddie announced. Look, this bush is full of ripe blueberries, the little snail said. I'm going to pick them all. But Eddie jumped in front of Berry and quickly picked the biggest berries. This bush is full of berries too, Dolly told the others. But the little potato beetle was faster again. By the time Dolly got to the bush, he'd already picked the best of the berries. Eddie, that's not fair. Don't pick all the berries, the little ladybird complained. Then the friends came to a stream. Let's build a bridge over the stream. I know exactly how. Let's all go and bring that big log here. They all had to work hard to pull the heavy log over the stream. The little friends made a super bridge together. It's done, Flutter sighed. Look, there's another blueberry bush with lots of berries on it. That was Eddie's cue. I'm going to get there first. Those blueberries are all mine, he shouted triumphantly. But he pushed past Flutter so hard that she slipped and fell into the stream. Help! Don't worry, Flutter. Hold on to me, Dolly shouted and stretched her hand out to the floundering butterfly. But the water flowed too fast and Flutter couldn't reach Dolly. Berry picked up a long stick. Grab the stick, Flutter, he shouted. But this didn't work either because the river started to carry the little butterfly away. Eddie, help! We've got to pull poor Flutter out of the water! Dolly yelled, and they pulled the soggy butterfly out of the stream. Oh my! I'm so cold! I'm very, very cold! And my little wings are soaked through! Here, take my jumper. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry, Flutter. That's very nice of you. But you'll catch a cold too without your jumper. We should collect a large pile of leaves and wrap Flutter up in them. Berry, Dolly and Eddie gathered a big bunch of burdock leaves and covered the shivering butterfly with them. I'm still very cold and my wings don't work. Look, they're all wet and ruined. Flutter started to sob. The sun took pity on the weeping butterfly and came down close to warm her wings. Flutter's wings were soon beautifully dry and as good as new. Hooray! I'm all dry and warm at last! Thank you, sun! 
Flutter said with a smile. I'm so sorry, Flutter, Eddie said. I promise I won't pick all the blueberries next time. I want you to have all the ones that I've picked. Thank you, Eddie. Why don't we share them instead? Let's hurry home and bake a blueberry pie. The friends all walked back to Flutter's house and got to work straight away. They picked all the leaves off and gave the blueberries a good wash. Spoons stirred and pans clattered until the kitchen was filled with the sweet smell of delicious blueberry pie. The yummy dessert was soon ready. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Bubble the baby beetle came along to join the feast. The forest friends all sat around the table and chatted late into the night. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The carnival. Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef, and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil, and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier, and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly, Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry, but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed, and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for Boys, I had a lovely princess dress, but the wind blew it away. We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said. A sun costume. Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, 
Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched, and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you, Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Santa One snowy morning, Dolly the ladybird turned to Berry the snail and said, Hey Berry, Santa's coming tonight. Really? Berry wondered. That's right, he leaves presents in the boots of good children. Remember to put your boots in the window. That evening, Berry cleaned his boots and popped them in the window. He was so excited when he went to bed that he couldn't get to sleep. He stared out at the sky to see when Santa would appear with his reindeer sleigh. Dolly got up early the next morning. She ran straight to the window. Her boots were packed with presents, colouring pencils and a big red apple. Berry ran straight to his window too. He was very excited. He couldn't wait to see what Santa had brought him. But, oh dear, his little boots were empty. Berry was so upset that he didn't see the huge red parcel in the other window. He looked inside his boots again and again. He shook them upside down, but there was nothing in them. He was so sad that he decided to run away. Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Dolly went over to Berry's house. Hello! Look what I got from Santa! Dolly started to worry. She knocked and knocked, but Berry didn't open the door. Where's Berry gone? I have to find him. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly went with her. Berry? Berry! 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 <laughs> it was getting dark by the time the four friends found Berry. He was sitting on a tree stump and crying. Dolly ran to him. What's wrong, Berry? What happened? Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Don't be silly. I'm sure you got a present, Dolly reassured her friend. Maybe it was so big, Santa couldn't fit it in your boots and he put it somewhere else. No, I didn't get anything. I don't think Santa's real at all. Just then, a sleigh appeared in the sky. It was being pulled by two reindeers. Ho, 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 Santa waved at the children. I hope you all liked your presents. See you again next year. Berry was so surprised. Let's all go to Berry's and look for his present. The little snail felt much better already. They saw the big red parcel the minute they walked into Berry's house. Look, your present's in the other window. There it is. It's wonderful. Berry opened the present. It was a colourful wind chime. When Berry shook it, 
The little bells knocked into each other and made a pretty tinkling sound. It's beautiful. Stanley fixed the wind chime by the door and they all said good night to Berry. Berry jumped happily into bed and fell fast asleep to the tinkling of the chime. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The board game. It was a lovely spring day and Berry was playing a board game with Flutter. They had to follow a long trail from a mouse to a piece of cheese. The winner is the first one to reach the cheese, the little butterfly girl explained. Berry started the game. He threw the dice and moved his counter. Then it was Flutter's turn. She threw the dice and moved. I won, the little snail boy shouted when his counter reached the piece of cheese. OK, you won. Let's play it again. Berry won the second game too. I won, I'm the winner again, the little snail boy shouted with pride. Let's play another game. They started to play the game again. This time, Flutter was the first to reach the piece of cheese. I won, Berry, now I'm the winner, the little butterfly girl announced with a grin. Berry was so upset that he hid under the pine tree where he threw the dice so that Flutter couldn't see. I threw a six, but Flutter told him off. That's not fair, Berry. You need to throw the dice where I can see it. No. Throw the dice again, Berry. This time he threw a two. He got left behind and Flutter won that game. That's not fair. I want to win. That's cheating. But, Berry, that's the point of a board game. One player wins and then the other wins. You can't win every time. But I can. I want to win every game, Berry whined. And he was so cross that he threw the board game down on the ground. OK, if that's how you want it, you can play on your own. And she flew away. It'll be better on my own, Berry grumbled. He threw the dice and moved his counter. He threw again and moved his counter. And he won one game after another. But he soon got bored of the game. He tried playing the game with his teddy. But his teddy wasn't a very exciting opponent. Berry eventually set off to look for Flutter again. It was no good on my own, he thought sadly to himself. He found Flutter playing cards with Dolly, Bubble and Balthazar in the meadow. Can I play too? Berry asked shyly. Well, Berry, you can play but you're not guaranteed to win and I wouldn't like you to throw the cards down as well. Flutter eventually shouted after Berry. Berry, you can come and play, but only if you promise not to get cross if you don't win. I promise, Berry agreed and ran to join his pals. They sat playing cards until it got dark. Berry won one game, Flutter won another, and Bubble, Balthazar and Dolly all won one too. Berry was so happy to be playing with his friends that he forgot to get angry when he didn't win. Stanley the Stag Beetle flew by and shouted down to them. Look, I've carved a roasting stick. Come on, let's make a fire and roast apples. They all seemed to like the idea. Eddie the Potato Beetle joined them. They all helped to build a fire, sliced apples up and put them on sticks and roasted them over the glowing embers. The little gang of friends ate up all the apples they cooked. Berry gave his last piece of apple to Flutter. He really wanted to say something nice to the little butterfly girl, but all he eventually said was, Here, this is for you. When all the apples had gone, the friends pushed their sticks into the fire 
and drew pictures with them in the dark night sky. Barry and Ollie say, what will we learn today? Kindergarten. One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Berry's door. Come quickly, Berry, or we'll be late. Berry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us. We're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses, fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Berry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Berry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands, Mrs Bumblebee shouted. Then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down while Mrs Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings with a big wooden train in the middle. Berry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come. Christmas. 
It was a crisp winter day and Berry the snail and Dolly the ladybird went into the woods to look for a bunch of Christmas greenery. Look, Berry, this little tree got knocked over in the storm. Let's take it home. We can decorate it for Christmas. Hooray! We'll have a real Christmas tree, Berry shouted. They lifted the tree up and saw a centipede sheltering under its branches. Help me, Berry. Let's put him on the sledge. He's hurt himself and looks very cold. We can take him to my house. They lifted the centipede carefully onto the sledge. Will he be all right? Berry worried. Of course he will, Dolly reassured her friend. When they got home, they put the poorly centipede to bed. Dolly made him hot tea and Berry read him caterpillar stories from a storybook. Next morning, the centipede opened his eyes and smiled a little smile. He got better every day and soon he was healthy again. Dolly asked him to stay. You're so nice. Don't go, centipede. Spend Christmas with us. Well, thank you. I'd love to stay. But what should we get him for Christmas? Dolly wondered. What would make a centipede happy? Dolly told him her idea. The little snail nodded excitedly. Berry and Dolly went to see the ants. The queen ant welcomed them with open arms. Dolly told them what kind of present she thought of. We can make anything you want, said the queen. Christmas came and Berry and Dolly made a tree stand. As night fell, Berry gave Dolly her present. Merry Christmas, Dolly. Thank you, Berry, the ladybird said. She was delighted. It's beautiful. Dolly was very happy and wound the pretty ribbon around the tree. Merry Christmas to you too, Dolly said and handed Berry his present. Sparklers, super, let's put them on the tree. They lit the sparklers and crackling sparks danced around the Christmas tree. The glittering light attracted lots of tiny fireflies and each brought a Christmas decoration. Even the centipede helped to trim the tree. Soon the ants arrived carrying a parcel. They handed it to Berry and Dolly. This is our present to you, centipede, Berry said to him. Merry Christmas. Boots, he shouted happily. They'll keep your little feet warm when you're walking in the snow, Dolly explained. The friends' celebrations went on late into the night. There was Eddie the potato beetle, Stanley the stag beetle, Alfonso the cricket and Rosita the rose beetle. The fireflies built a big snowman with the little ants. They all sang and danced around the Christmas tree. Flutter the butterfly came to celebrate with them. Zephyr the dragonfly danced with Leapy the grasshopper. Berry and Dolly skipped around with Balthazar the bee. When the party was over, the centipede cleaned his boots and put them on a shelf. What a wonderful day I've had. It's a shame that Christmas only comes once a year. The Hot Air Balloon One summer afternoon a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. 
When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the oil beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The oil beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry, Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon. Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger, and even her head had stopped hurting. It's ready, said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying, Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet 